scripture passage today, that familiar one that comes from Luke 2, the, one of the accounts, the main account of Christ's birth. The job's worth doing, it's worth doing well. Let's prepare with prayer so we can do it well. Let's pray. Lord, we come to this, your word, knowing they will not return to you void. We pray that your word would do the work, the inspiration, motivation, the movement, the improvement, the growth, the correction, whatever it might be that you have for us, Lord. We know that you use your word to grow us. So Lord, through the work of your Holy Spirit, who inspired these words, let us hear, let us receive, and let us be, according to your will, in Jesus' name, amen. We're not going to read the whole passage. It's quite long and very enjoyable. I encourage you to read all of Luke 2. You can do that Christmas Eve or Christmas morning with your family. Today we're going to start with chapter 2, verse 6. While they were there, that's Mary and Joseph, the time came for her to deliver her child. Her firstborn son wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in the manger because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. And the angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. The angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. For, to you, for unto you is born this day the city of David, a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. Suddenly. There was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth. Peace among those whom he favors. God, God bless our hearing and living out God's holy word. Well, with the nativities and the movies and all the symbols and Christmas all around us. What all can we learn this year? Many have gone to Christmas Eve service for many, many years, and this isn't Christmas Eve. We're celebrating Christmas today because we won't be meeting Christmas Eve. So what can we learn this new? And I would challenge you to say, I think we can relearn or reemphasize part of the greatest, greatest part of the story, the part that makes it all relevant. Part that connects us to it. We take notice of many important things in the scripture. What a scene it is. Jesus has just been born, wrapped in swaddling clothes and in a manger. Mary Joseph marveling over not only this newborn, beautiful baby boy, but the fact that this is the Savior of the world. The Messiah had finally come. And he come to them. The fields and shepherds are not aware of what's going to come before them. Imagine, if you will, that scene. Look a little closer as the angel of the Lord came to him. The angel of the Lord. That's something that you need to pay attention to. Who is this angel of the Lord? Shepherds are common folk. The scriptures say that they were living in the fields. But these are folks that are nomads. They stay on the field. David did this for a big part of his youth. Take care of the sheep. They were the veterinarian. They were the, the rescuers. They were the leaders. They were the nurturers. They were the uh, birthers. They were the ones who did absolutely everything to take care of the sheep. The sheep learned their voice. And learned, the sheep learned to trust them. And so the shepherds are caught up in taking care of their sheep. Suddenly they're going to find out that they are sheep, that this good shepherd is ministering to them. 
The Good Shepherd is bringing to them the greatest gift they'll ever know. It's coming from that little baby. Just over in Bethlehem, that manger, wrapped in swaddling clothes. It's going to be a busy night for them. They will not be unchanged. They will be changed forever, and they will share some of that change with the whole world that will listen to them. You're going to see the angel of the Lord. You're going to hear the voice of the angel of the Lord. And you're going to see the heavens open, and the heavenly host proclaiming before them. I can't imagine, do you? I can't imagine the beauty and the, the, the foretaste of what's going to come. And i got to say, I would love to hear the music. What did they hear? What was the music? What was the sound besides the voice? The angel of the Lord, the heavenly host proclaiming. The scene is that the angel of the Lord appears. This isn't the first time the angel of the Lord has appeared. The angel of the Lord has been busy all through time. The angel of the Lord appeared to, to Hagar, telling her that she was pregnant. The angel of the Lord appears to Abraham, stopping the sacrifice of his son Isaac, just in time. The angel of the Lord appears in the flame of a burning bush to Moses. The angel of the Lord waits along a path with his flaming sword, ready to kill Balaam the prophet. So his donkey speaks up and wakes him up to the fact that the angel of the Lord knows he's not telling the truth. The angel of the Lord appears to Israel when they disobeyed to let them know that God was not pleased. The angel of the Lord appeared to Gideon, brought fire from the rock. The angel of the Lord appeared to Manoah and his wife, Samson's parents, who were without children. The angel of the Lord comes and says, you will have a child. The angel of the Lord pleads with the Lord to have mercy on Jerusalem prophet of Zechariah. Also in Zechariah, the angel of the Lord takes away the sin of the high priest Joshua. And in Luke 1, the angel of the Lord came to Elizabeth, Mary's cousin, told her six months or so before Mary that, well, you're going to have a child. He called his name John. He has to be John the Baptist. We learn in Luke 1 that the angel of the Lord's name was Gabriel. We go to the King James Version and Luke 2, verse 9. We read these words, and lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them. The angel of the Lord did, did, did just appear to announce to whoever might be listening. This was an intentional visitation by the one who does God's bidding. A lot of times it's communication come with a very, very important message. Probably the most important message the world would ever receive that the city has been born. We also have this scene. There we go. My computer didn't want to work for me. Of the glory of the Lord now, usually we just see this in postcards as the light coming from heaven. It's so much more than the light. This is the glory of the Lord. This is huge. This is what shows us that God is God. It is what emanates from God, his glory. It is what the angels and heavenly hosts proclaim, glory to God. If we were to look at the word for glory, it means wait. Wait, this is the weight of God. God's glory is so great, there's a weight to it, there's a heaviness. You know that even light has weight. A box filled with light will not weigh as much as a box filled with darkness. It's not going to be a whole lot of difference on earth. If we were to magnify that very, very large, it would be a, a great difference. A difference. So imagine light, the glory of God. And the weight of that. Matter of fact, in 2 Chronicles 13 and 14, it says this. The trumpeters and musicians 
joined in unison to give praise and thanks to the Lord. Accompanied by trumpets, cymbals, and other instruments, the singers raised their voices in praise to the Lord, saying, He is good. His love endures forever. Then the temple of the Lord was filled with the cloud. That's the glory of the Lord. That the priests could not stand to minister by reason of the cloud. It was so heavy, they couldn't even stand. The glory of Jehovah filled the house of God. This is what we see. The angel of the Lord and the glory of God. So heavy that without God's help, we couldn't even stand up underneath his weight. The angel begins to speak. Now, I don't know about you, but I can really relate with the shepherds who says they were so terrified. Again, if we look up that word, it means as afraid as you could be. Think of the time when you were the, the most scared. Maybe somebody was about to be hurt or, or maybe you feared for your life, whatever it might be. That's how afraid they were. There was no going past this. They were as afraid as they could be to still be alive. The angel of the Lord says, don't be afraid. I may be thinking those are the most important words. They aren't. They're important. Don't be afraid. The angel of the Lord knows that the human beings, they need to get past this initial fear if they're even going to hear. When we're really full of fear, we can miss seeing things, we can miss hearing things, and actually we can become a very poor witness because our senses are just kind of dulled by the fear. So Gabriel says, don't be afraid. That comes with great news, but great joy for all the people. This is a great, great event that has happened, and all of heaven is going to proclaim it. We're going to use shepherds as the messenger. How powerful is that? Not the king, not the wealthy, not the powerful, the nomadic shepherd. Probably hadn't bathed in a few months. Really knew sheep better than people. God said, you're going to be my messenger. See, when God calls us to do something, God equips us. God equips the shepherds to be about the task. The angel of the Lord stands before him. The glory of God is around them. They're, they're trying to deal with us being terrified. The angel of the Lord in the past has come to, to tell, to stop, to punish, to demonstrate, to inform, to forgive. This time he delivers a very clear and different message. Here are the three most powerful words you'll ever hear. Three most important words you'll ever hear. And they're not, I love you, but those are so important, especially from God. And it's not, I forgive you, so important, especially from God. But imagine if none of that applied to us. What would we do? The angel of the Lord says these three words. Without them, we're lost. He says, for unto you. For unto you. Not just the shepherds. Remember, he said to all people, for unto you, and me, is given to save you. What's the big deal of three little words? Well, if the gift was given, but it didn't apply to us, well, there would be salvation, there'd be forgiveness, there'd be eternity, there'd be all these things. But it wouldn't be for us. If it wasn't for, for unto you, all the prophecies of the scriptures would not matter. It might be warning us, but we couldn't do anything about it because they're not for us. The miracles that Jesus did, the miracles that God has performed through his people throughout time, they wouldn't matter. After all, they're not for us. The teachings, especially those of Jesus Christ himself, they wouldn't matter to us. They might matter to someone somewhere, but it wouldn't matter to us because it wasn't for us. The death on the cross, so powerful, so necessary, so heinous. Sadly, it wasn't 
those three words are unto you. It wouldn't be for us. The resurrection of Jesus Christ, that all-powerful moment when he steps from the tomb, we can know that we, like him, will be raised from the dead into a resurrection body. We'd have to see a sign saying, but not for you. The ascension of Jesus Christ into heaven. The message that he'll come back. The same way he left, he's going to come back. But we have to understand it wouldn't be for us. Finally, heaven for all this glory. A beauty that opened up before the shepherds, all the heavenly hosts. Well, we'd have to just say, well, I'm glad they got a peek. Because we're not even going to get that because it's not for us. The good news is, it is for us. For unto you. For unto you. For unto you was given this day in Bethlehem a Savior who is Christ the Lord. He is your Savior. He is your Messiah. He is your answer to this life. He is answer to the next life. He came unto you. Miracles and prophecies, they matter. Because they tell you and me indications that God is God and his word is real. The scriptures, the teachings, they matter. Because they teach us, they're for us in this life and in the next. Jesus' death on the cross. The one who is perfect, being beaten and killed for the guilty, is for us. Resurrection coming out of the tomb. Jesus didn't need to do that. He was already heaven with the Father. He did that. For us, ascension, promise of heaven, this day in Bethlehem and born unto you, a Savior. Born unto you, a Savior. To save you from whatever you're going through doesn't mean necessarily struggles will go away. The Christ will walk with you through it. He will help you through it. And in hindsight, you'll look back and see where he was. You'll see what you've learned. You'll see the growth that you you uh, experience, you'll have a testimony to share to others. Praise God and give him glory for what he's done. Friend of you, before Jesus died in the cross, he appeared in an upper room to his disciples. So he took bread, blessed it, and broke it. He took that broken bread and said something pretty odd, I'm sure, sounded odd. He said, this is my body broken. Share this wonderful word. For you. My body broken for you. He just took the cup. He said, this is a new covenant sealed in my blood for the forgiveness of sins. You. Drink it, all of you. All of you. Drink from it. It's for you. Pain that his body and his blood might be broken and poured out. And to you and to me. Because of those three words, Jesus gives us invitation. Told I stand at the door and knock. If anyone open the door unto me, I will come in. And I will sup with them. Friend, Jesus Christ is given unto you. We know for a fact in this world not all Christmas presents are open, and some that are open aren't desired. So they're given back, they're thrown away, they're to be the, uh, returned, whatever. Have you opened the greatest gift the world has ever known? Because it was given unto you. The angel of the Lord came so you would know. The heavens proclaimed his presence so you would know. The beauty of the Lord, the, the glory of the Lord shone all around so you would know that this is God come to earth for you. The greatest gift, the greatest for you, you will ever know. Without it, all is lost. Nothing of scripture, nothing of heaven, nothing 
following day. Five six. Friend to you. Can you open that gift? Let's pray. Our great God, we thank you that in your love, in your mercy, in your pity, you came. You might deliver your son unto us. Sinful people. People who are wayward. People who today want to follow you and tomorrow want to follow themselves. We knew our sin. We knew our mortality. We had you send them unto us anyway. But help us to hear and receive the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. It wasn't just sent out there to the cosmos the empty space. Angel of the Lord made sure that we understood that he would spread to us. Us. All that Jesus is, all that Jesus would do, all he teaches, and even his home in heaven is ours through him. So Lord, help us to truly trust you, to open and fold that gift from heaven, Jesus Christ. Help us to walk with him, talk with him, trust him, to grow in love with him, to serve him, and to enjoy him here on earth, knowing that the time will come when we will look face to face, hear his voice, be in the presence of the Father and the Spirit, a great cloud of witnesses won't be invisible anymore, will all be visible. Every eye, I'm sure, will be directed toward you through beauty, your holiness, wonder, We'll be able to stand straight even under the weight of your awesome glory. We thank you. We praise you. Help us, Lord. Receive that gift. You know what? Jesus' name.